Our gospel for this Christmas Eve is from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they had made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been, had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
So tonight on this Christmas Eve, I'd like to begin our message with a blessing for us all. Um, this poem is called To Come Home to Yourself. It was written by John O'Donnell. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May your fears yield their deepest tranquillities. May all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. Tonight we celebrate the beauty and the mystery of Jesus' birth. The moment when the divine, our God, broke into our world to be born as a baby, birthed into the world by his mother, Mary. The incarnation of Emmanuel, God with us. All Advent long, we've been preparing our hearts for this time of worship together with our theme of close to home. And tonight we remember those promised words from the book of Revelation when the prophet speaks. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. God is here. And you are home. However, it has been a restless journey for our Savior, one that began long ago, one that brought him to be born among us, and one that ultimately took him to the cross and led him, and therefore all of us, to a new life in the empty tomb, the miracle of the resurrection. Tonight on Christmas Eve, we encounter this intersection of the God that never stops seeking us and our own restless need to find in God our resting place, the one who loves us and welcomes us home. A few weeks ago, following our St. Andrew's Lutheran Teen Youth Group uh, Christmas party, I walked down the sidewalk here in Lake Murray to West Coast, and there for our annual Christmas caroling, this, even, this happens every year in memory of our late friend and colleague and former co-owner of West Coast, Pastor Larry Coger. Our own Rachel Line and Kevin Smead were the musicians that led our group through all the classic Christmas songs like Jingle Bells and Oh Come All You Faithful and of course the 12 Days of Christmas. While I was singing along outside in the patio area, when I noticed there was a really cute baby, maybe about eight months old, being held by her mom, listening to the music and just kicking her legs wildly and happily. As soon as the music started, her legs started kicking. She kept going like that all night. She couldn't get enough of it. And the little body was never still. And there was her mom, just holding her the whole time while she kicked those legs. Babies can be very restless little creatures, especially at night. When my own daughter was born, I was so grateful for the nurses that taught us how to swaddle her tightly so that her little arms couldn't move and those kicking legs could settle and we could all get some rest. That is, of course, until she woke up crying and hungry about every two hours. This practice of wrapping babies up in swaddling clothes to help quiet and soothe them has been passed down from generation upon generation. Perhaps it is some of the most ancient wisdom we have and still use. We even read that Mary wrapped Jesus up in this way. When in our gospel text, the angels tell the shepherds, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. In a way, a restless child is a poetic embodiment of the God that we know throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. Since the very beginning, God has been on the move, creating the universe and all of its wonder and beauty, bringing our world into being, separating day and night, and of course, creating everything that lives and moves and has its being. The seeking for relationships and connection inspired God to make people. 
namely Adam and Eve in the creation story. And of course, as we know, even though the home God made in the Garden of Eden was perfect, there was also a restlessness within Adam and Eve that led them to fall away from God, a journey that took them and God's people not just out of the garden, but very far from home, from the home that God intended for them. Then God called Abraham and Sarah out of their home country to a new home that God promised to them. And then God rescued the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt to the home God intended for them. But they too were stiff-necked people, restless. And so they wandered the desert for 40 years before entering their promised homeland. God's people were not over their restlessness once in the promised land of Israel, though. They would continue to wrestle with God and then be removed from their homeland to captivity in Babylon for 70 years, praying to return to their home where they could worship their God again. And then, just when it seemed to many that this God had abandoned them completely following the occupation by the Roman Empire, we have a God so restless for a relationship with humanity that one quiet evening, God sent a messenger to a young girl named Mary, saying, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have favor, found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom will be no end. God's call to Mary and Joseph to welcome Jesus into their lives and into the world would also take them on a journey, away from their families and homes, to the place where it had been foretold to the city of Bethlehem. When it came time for him to be born, they couldn't find a suitable place to rest and prepare. So here, Mary gave birth to him, not in a home or even at the inn. Jesus begins his life on earth, far from home, in a humble stable, welcomed by the arms of Mary and Joseph, cradled in a manger, celebrated by all of the nearby shepherds. In the same way that his life began, Jesus continued to be constantly on the move in his years of ministry and teaching. Starting from the moment his cousin John baptizes him in the Jordan River, Jesus took his message around the countryside to bring good news to all who would hear him, especially those in need of healing, acceptance, and community. This Emmanuel God with us draws near to God's people once again, to bring forgiveness, reconciliation, and hope. But this time, in human form, in a mortal body. And once again, his journey of faith took him far from home, all the way to the city of Jerusalem, where he faced abandonment, conviction, and finally death on the cross. But that is the amazing message that is at the center of our faith, that even death cannot stop God's love for us. This love that came into the world as a restless child, wrapped in swaddling clothes. This love that Mary and Joseph welcome into their lives. This love that sent Jesus out to the margins of society. And this love that all of our sin and shame could not silence or stop. This love that we do not have to earn or ask for, that is simply just ours. This love that raised Jesus from the dead, that is the source of all creation. The love that spoke through the prophets and brought God's people home over and over again. This restless love of God is for you this night. As people, we know what it feels like to be agitated, frustrated, disappointed, to have things not go the way that we hope or plan. We know what it means to be hurt, 
scared, worried, and alone. We've also very intimately known, especially in these last 21 months, the pain of not being able to be with those that we love or surrounded by the communities that love us. So may this Christmas story and all that it means for us center us again in our reality as God's beloved for all eternity. So to close this message, and I'm going to read that. We're going to read from a book that I've been, I've found a lot of comfort in. Um, it's Benedictus. It's a book of blessings by John O'Donohue. Um, so we're going to read one of the poems here. And it's titled, The Eyes of Jesus. I imagine the eyes of Jesus were harvest brown. The light of their gazing suffused with the seasons. The shadow of winter. The mind of spring, the blues of summer and amber of harvest. A gaze that is a perfect sister to the kindness that dwells in his beautiful hands. The eyes of Jesus gaze on us, stirring in the heart's clay the confidence of seasons that never lose their way to harvest. This gaze knows the signature of our heartbeat, the first glimmer from the dawn that dreamed our minds. The crevices where thoughts grow long before the longing in the bone sends them towards the mind's eye. The artistry of the emptiness that knows to slow the hunger of outside things until they leave into the twilight side of the heart. A gaze full of all that is still future looking out for us to glimpse the jeweled light in winter stone, quickening the eyes that look at us to see through to where words are blind to say what we would love. Forever falling softly on our faces, his gaze plies the soul with light, laying down a luminous layer beneath our brief and brittle days. Until the appointed dawn comes, assured in harvest death, to unravel the last black knot. And we are back home in the house that we have never left. Yes, there is no place where God's love cannot reach you. And there is nothing that can separate you from your Savior. So we pray as St. August Augustine once wrote, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Amen. Amen.
at the end of each petition, uh, one of us will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you're welcome to respond by saying, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. So lead us by your spirit, that in this life we may live to your glory and in the life to come, in your eternal home forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love whispers to a weary and restless world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures. And where light pollution disrupts natural rhythms, encourage us to be better stewards and learn new practices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless new and expected parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid or without a place to call home this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need this night. We pray now for those we know silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace. We also have our live stream back there on the camera. I want to say peace to everyone worshiping online with us tonight through our live stream. And tonight as we continue with the receiving of the offering, um, we're going to go ahead and we don't have any ushers. Or I think the, the folks who were um, supposed to usher this evening um, called in and were sick, and so we're unable to be with us. So just give us a moment. We'll pass the offering plates. We'll get those passed around. Um, it's also very uh, easy and safe to give online. So there's directions on how to do that in our bulletin, including a QR code that will take you to our Venmo page. Um, so there's those options for you as well. This is also that time where we can collect those um, green slips. So, like I said, we'll get we'll get those offering plates coming, and um, when, as they get passed around, we can put those green slips in there. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. We can be praying for you. We also want to say a thank you to everyone who contributed to the poinsettia plants that are um, both in this building as well as in our other worship space, our community center. Um, those were uh, in the announcement pages. If you want to take a plant home with you. Um, you can do that. We'll probably just ask that you take it from the other building, right? Because we have Christmas Day worship in here tomorrow. So we want to try to leave these plants here um, to be a part of Christmas Day worship tomorrow. And look at that. Ushers are here. Thank you. <laughs> cool. We'll continue now with the receiving of the offering.
Bible says you came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted the shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at it blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. And before we sing a Silent Night, in parentheses as candles. Instead, we're going to use uh, lights. Pastor Sarah has some little finger lights that you can switch on and use. You can also use your cell phones. I don't have enough for everyone to get one. So I'm going to try to just pass around a little bit. Or you can use your cell phone. And then we're going to turn the lights down. <laughs>
gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.